Welcome to District Dialogue. My name is Ann Jones Goddard. I'm the District 4 Commissioner here in Douglas County. Today I have the very distinct pleasure of having uh, three guests from the Georgia Extension Office. And I know we look like we may have a little grocery store here, but we've got some props and we're going to share them with you and enlighten the conversation with them. Um, down here on the end, we have Mr. Kevin Livingston, who is the Agriculture and Natural Resource mm -hmm. uh, Agent here in Douglas County since 2006. Mm -hmm. You've been here a long time, haven't you? I, <laughs> as long yeah, as I, guess I can so. remember. I guess so. Sure. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Kevin focuses on the work of the soil and the water and the trees and the shrubs and the uh, uh, sod and turf mm -hmm. and, um, and garden plants and, mm -hmm. and all this uh, and food, food produ production. Yes. We do mm -hmm. have some people that grow a lot of gardens here. Mm -hmm. But uh, he is the coordinator for the Master Gardeners here in Douglas County too. And uh, he has uh, he serves on many boards with West Georgia Extension, um, uh, West Georgia Green Association, Green mm -hmm. Association Landscape I'm sorry. Community. Sure. And he's mm -hmm. past president of the statewide Association of Natural Resources Extension Professionals. Mm -hmm. So welcome, uh, Kevin. Thank you, Commissioner. Then uh, we have uh, Erica Pullen here. And now you're not from Douglas County, you're from Savannah, but we'll, we'll accept you. We're very <laughs> welcoming here. How long have you lived in Douglas County? I actually live in Marietta. Okay. And I just commute, but I've been here working with Extension for about a year now. Okay, but you've been in the, in the job of uh, working with the youth for over 10 years, yes, right? Yes, ma'am. And mm -hmm. uh, she works with the 4-H uh, Extension She's our 4-H County Extension yes. uh, agent here in Douglas County, and she works with all the youth. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get back to all of that because uh, there's a lot of people out there that will be in, very interested in getting their children involved yes. and mm -hmm. things like that. And uh, then last but certainly not least, we have Susan Culpepper, who is the director, uh, the director of the Cooperative Extension for here in Douglas County for 14 years, mm -hmm. and then you uh, are an extension agent as Family and Consumer Sciences for 20 years. That is a mouthful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you work basically with nutrition, health, and poverty awareness. I know we went to a com I went to a conference so you held right. down here at the church in Lake right. Springs. The poverty one simulation. That was very interesting. Very interesting. And, uh, you know, you opened your mind to some of the difficulties that people have when they're seeking help. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but you've received several state and national extension awards, and we welcome you uh, to our panel Thank today. You. And I'm gonna let y'all do most of the talking because y'all brought a lot of things here. And so uh, I'm gonna start down here with Kevin, if you don't okay. mind. Sure. And uh, Kevin, um, you deal with the, the agricultural and natural resources. Mm -hmm. Kind of give the audience what you do as okay. far as it is concerned. Well, uh, we work with uh, soils, developing soils. We do soil testing in our office and help people with composting. Uh, so that they have productive landscapes and productive gardens. We work in water. Uh, we get a lot of questions about uh, pest or weed issues in ponds. We work with uh, well water testing and we give uh, recommendations how to correct certain situations that may occur in the well water or uh, as well as drainage issues on the uh, uh, homeowner's property. Uh, we work with individuals who are interested in producing food, whether it's a home garden, uh, community garden, or a school garden, as well as small-scale production. We have a few farms that are developing right here in Douglas County, and so we're excited about that. Some of the questions that I get uh, are quite interesting. Now you have to solve yeah. problems. We're problem solvers, citizen. yes. Yes, because if mm -hmm. I had, say my grass doesn't grow very well, I may take a sample of my soil and bring it up to you, and you will do a test on it. That's Tell correct. Me what it, with that, I mean nitrogen or whatever. 
That's, that's correct. We'll look at the pH, we'll look at the nutrients that are there, and of course we send that off to a lab and they send the results back and of course we'll do recommendations and we get a lot of questions regarding turf and ornamentals, pest issues. When we talk about pests, we're talking about not only, a lot of folks uh, think about insects, but it could be weed pests, it could be a disease, and a disease could be a, a virus, a fungus, or a bacteria. I'm so, there's so glad lots you brought of this different... up because I've got holes in my yard. Just, uh -oh. just all of a sudden there's these holes and they're real deep. Okay. And, uh, I'll get with you off camera. Sure. Yeah. There's there's a couple things. It could we'll be cicada killers, or it could, that, but mm -hmm. we've never had that to happen. Yeah. And, uh, so that it seems like we've got a pest problem. So. so so we do identify different holes and different sizes fit different types of animals, whether it's an insect or a rodent or or uh, some some other type of wildlife. And you help people with their gardens. We do. Uh, we do. I, I, there's no help for me, I can assure you, because mm. I don't have enough sunshine. <laughs> yeah. But I, I try my best every year, and I'm, I'm disappointed every mm -hmm. year. Every year I'm disappointed. Yeah. But uh, I do have friends that have gardens, mm -hmm. and they're very productive, and it makes me very envious. Mm -hmm. But uh, tell me some of the things that you uh, help people with. Well, as we mentioned earlier, we do soil testing for the, for the gardens as well and help them lay out the garden. We give recommendations as to when to plant certain plants, uh, what's, what's a fall crop, crop, what's a spring crop, uh, when do I put blueberry bushes in the ground? Mm -hmm. When do I harvest my blueberries? How do I protect? How do you when keep the birds from eating your blueberries? That's, <laughs> you, you've got some. You've got some difficult I've situations got, there. Those are some of the I, highlands. Some I of the bigger did. ones. A lot we, of critters around my house. Yeah. Yes. Critters are a challenge. You know, some of the challenges <laughs> that we have here in Douglas County are armadillos and, of course, birds and and uh, coyotes and uh, we have buzzards in certain areas that are uh, challenging. So okay. lots of, so we deal with those issues as well, uh, giving recommendations. Of course, we can't remedy all the things that happen in the natural environment, but we can, we can help reduce some of those challenges for the homeowner. But you tell them uh, what kind of uh, fertilizer they might need, whether we, 10, 10, 10, 12, 12, 12, whatever. We, we, can, <laughs> we can help them with the uh, fertil fertilization or nutrient management, whether it's organic or it's, or it's synthetic fertilizers. It all depends on what they're trying to accomplish. If it's a sports field, of course, they'll use a lot more uh, nutrients because they're trying to grow it in very fast and get quick recovery after damage. If it's a homeowner's lawn, they might want to slow that pace down a little bit. And of course, in that mix of fertilization, we also uh, recommend certain weed controls if they have an, a desire mm -hmm. to have a uh, weed-free or weed-reduced lawn. Uh, we can help them with that, and timing is very important on that. Now so. you said something very mm -hmm. important a while ago. That you said you, if it's a sports field, so do you? work with the school system we the fields or, or the uh, rec department we have in the past it all depends on uh, the management there and it depends on how what their needs are uh, we work with the county and the city city and the schools and um, uh, going out and look at it various fields we help these individuals who are in the green industry as and some of those individuals are employed by the county or the city uh, working with sports fields as far as uh, um, best man management practices, sharing how to grow in a field, how to, how to deal with comp soil compaction, how to get the turf to recover in time for the next ball game. A lot of times we see deterioration in the crowns of the soccer, mm -hmm. or excuse me, the football fields or the goal miles of the soccer fields. And so mm -hmm. recommendations are needed in order to grow that in in a timely manner so that those fields will stay uh, productive so that the citizens or the uh, players have the opportunity to get out there and Do play you, on a good I'm field. Just talking mm -hmm. off the cuff here, do mm -hmm. you help with water, um, like wa washes down on Oh, erosion? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you we, help with that? We do. We, we talk to folks about different methods to control uh, water movement on their land to reduce that erosion, uh, whether it's plant material or putting in walls or drainage systems. So, we, yes, we do. And we do. the kind mm -hmm. of plants that would the kind of, slow it down, slow yes. the water flow. Mm -hmm. down. Slow it down. And one of the things that I really really enjoy most people aren't aware of is that in a natural setting or an area that's planted with plant material will actually absorb a lot of water and so on a acre of land 
the absorption of rainwater is almost 98% on a natural setting. When we put in the concrete surfaces or the hard surfaces, we lose a lot of that water. And water is a big issue for a lot of municipalities. And so by putting plant material around your property and making sure that you have mm -hmm. good ground cover, you're gonna absorb more moisture. And it actually helps out the county, the city, and in the metropolitan area to, to have more water available for its citizens. And you, you're involved in natural resources, so mm -hmm. do you teach people what not to throw out in their backyard, like paint and turpentine? We, and we, <laughs> we, we do encourage them not to do so, and, and one of the ways we do that is by getting them engaged in gardening or landscaping mm -hmm. and understanding the value of water and soil and the outdoor environment and how we have to uh, protect it. We have to do our part in protecting that outdoor environment so that we can have productive gardens and gardens that feed our families and our neighbors and our friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are real important. And by bringing that awareness not only to the adults but to the younger population that's coming up in the school systems, we get them engaged mm -hmm. in doing, doing uh, gardening they're more apt to take care of our water resources, right. our soil resources, see, our if trees. if they have parents that do not garden, then the next generation's not going to garden, and it just keeps dominoing on down the, the, the line. Mm -hmm. Now, you've got a little friend here with you. What? Yeah, this is, this is my, uh, this is an example of a grow bag, and we use these grow bags to introduce gardening to the young, young children in the school systems, and sometimes we go into the park systems. Uh, we like it when the families are there together so that the child uh, gets the opportunity to develop a, a grow bag and take this home mm -hmm. and the family as a group works to, to generate. This particular uh, plant is a curly leaf kale. Uh, in the past we've had uh, various types of pepper plants and we've gone into the school systems where we have 70 to 80 kids with their families actually generate a, a grow bag and we call it the grow bag experience and it's not all about just generating that grow bag it's about talking to master gardeners and people who are passionate and about you gardening work with them. You i work, work with, with the master, master gardeners. gardeners i recruit train and uh, and uh, coordinate the master gardener program here and i work with carroll county as a uh, co-coordinator for the two counties so we have a very uh, very active master gardener group here in That's douglas good. county we have 57 active master gardeners uh, this past year, we had 16 new master gardeners come on board. I always go to the spring sale. And oh, buy the flowers. You're, yes. you're talking about the uh, first weekend in May yes. at the greenhouse. <laughs> Our master gardeners. Yeah. Uh, somewhere around yeah. there. They generate or propagate uh, plants there for sale. That's right, to help with all the projects that they do. You have to get up and get there earlier. You, you do. <laughs> uh, thin pickings. Uh, so, uh, do, do you actually go, you said you go into the school. We do. What age uh, groups do you work well, with? Well, it all depends on which group invites us. We've gone in, usually uh, we've gone into Brighton Academy where we actually uh, did a grow bag experience there and all, uh, it was for a, uh, what was it, a health, uh, I think it was a health mm -hmm. fair and they had uh, the families there and we did about 80 bags. Um, and it's That's really. That's a neat idea if I can grow mm -hmm. a banana pepper in it. You might you might be able to if you can get <laughs> you get a little get sunlight. Sunshine. So you need I, I've that's, got trees there you go. My <laughs> if not, we'll have to get you a grow light. You have to do some type of grow light and you see if you can do but that. Then I may have a, a a visit from the police mm -hmm. department if they see my light shining. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, anything else you want to add? Well, we we just we just enjoy working with the public. We're we're always, uh, we try to be available to most folks. And one of the things that I really want to share uh, about Master Gardeners, and most people know Master Gardeners in the community because they're so active, but these people are very passionate about plant material. Oh, Marjorie goes to Marjorie church. Stanzel, she Linda to Nunez, church, yes. uh, <laughs> uh, Marilyn Parker, our Beekeepers Association president, Earl mm -hmm. Cosgrove, and uh, many of them are very, very mm -hmm. passionate about uh, plants, and they want to share that information. Sandra. and, uh, and I can't think of her last name. It used to be a Dawes. I always remember Sandra Dawes. But oh, okay. Uh, so, she's a friend of mine. Too. Oh, okay. <laughs> so what I wanted to share about that is that, it, that these folks are uh, there to help. And we have people coming into our office every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday that are Master Gardener volunteers. They're extension volunteers there to help answer questions about gardening. What yeah, insect is this? What is the disease that I have? What can I do to get to get my garden to grow? 
Uh, how do I set up a grow light so I can have <laughs> banana peppers at home so I can share them with my son? Uh, you know, different things like that. Yeah. We have, uh, I have some of the unusual calls that I get. I had a lady that was about 82 years old, called me up, wanted information about her lemon tree. I said, are you growing citrus in Douglas County, Georgia? And she said, yes, sir, I am. I, wow. wheel, I wheel it in each, every uh, winter <laughs> and I get about, she said she got, I believe it was about 20 to 30 lemons off of this oh, little tree that's in a container. Have you checked the so, prices of lemons lately? They're very expensive. I, we went well, to a fish restaurant the other day and they did not serve lemons at a fish restaurant oh. because they're too expensive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, sounds like we need to get some lemon trees going in Isn't some containers with grow lights. Huh? <laughs> I go. agree, yeah. <laughs> But that, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're going to move on uh, to uh, Erica here now. And now you work with the 4 H'ers. Now, what is a 4 H'er? A 4 H'er is a child between the ages of 8 all the way to 18. And basically, it's a youth development program where we teach them how to uh, be the best they can be, um, whether that's serving in the community or learning how to take on a project, do the research, and then present that information, so public speaking. Um, and then, of course, creating just a, a community for them to feel belong. Um, so that's so what does the H stand for? So there's four H's. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One is for head, hands, health, and heart. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So okay. head, of course. Use your head. <laughs> use your head, that's right. It stands for knowledge. Um, the heart, of course, is having the heart compassion. for your compassion or having um, just simply love for those around you. Mm -hmm. uh, hands, of course, goes with community service or citizenship, and health is healthy living. So anything that's regarding uh, the way you eat, down to uh, even knowing how to garden and things like that. Just, yeah. yeah. Well, if someone is interested in enrolling their child into the 4-H'ers, how would they do that? Oh, they could either call the office or they can come by our office. Um, we're located on Fairburn, 6, 6279 Fairburn Road, mm -hmm. uh, and they would fill out an enrollment card. And on that enrollment card, it's completely free of charge, but they would give us information about their child, whether that's what school they're in, what grade level, their teacher's name, um, and then on the back of that card, they would simply list what activities they want to be a part of, and they would go from there. So what are some of the activities? Glad you asked. <laughs> Glad you asked. So, I'm just on a roll here. <laughs> so some of the activities we offer, we have a homeschool club, we have a cooking club, and I actually have an apron there showing that our kids that participate in the yeah. cooking club, uh, they receive a certified, they become a certified youth you and food teach and nutrition. the youth how to cook. Yes. And not with a microwave. Not with a microwave. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> we have, um, with that cooking club, they learn how to uh, safely use knives and, and stove tops and things like that, uh, cooking food on the right temperature. Uh, we also have a horse club, so if there's any children, any kids that are interested there's in equestrian. There's lots of horses out in mm -hmm. District 4. All right. There is. We, we've got a lot of them. So we and teach them. gardens. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, we also have a, what we call a safe shooting sports team. SAFE stands for Shooting Awareness, Fun, and Education. So if there's any child that's interested in learning how to safely use uh, any type of rifle, rifle, yes ma'am, shotgun, pistols, things like that, we, we have a club for them. Uh, so yeah, anything that the children are really much, pretty much interested in, we'll try to form a club around that and we'll go from there. That's very interesting. I used to ride horses, so I'm really interested in, nice. in the horses and everything. Awesome. But uh, we've got several places, uh, horse farms mm -hmm. out in Douglas, in the 4th District, yeah. and beautiful horse farms. Yeah. And I'm sure they would love to partner with you, too. That's right. We, we have a really great horse club, um, and we also have what we call a horse quiz bowl team. They competed last year on a state level and on a national level. Um, and I believe they came in first place. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Yes, ma'am. Way to go. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> so well, that sounds like lots and lots of fun. But yes. uh, we're going to have your address and your phone number put up on the uh, camera here. Sounds and, good. and your building is off of Fairburn Road. If anybody's familiar with the new uh, tag and tax office that is called the Admi County Administrative Building, 
but it's right up from there yes. on Fairburn Road or Highway 92. Mm -hmm. On the other side of the road, up on the hill, is yes. a gray building. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. right? yes. And it's across from Gable's Sporting Goods. Yes. There you Give go. you a little <laughs> plug there. That's okay. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, uh, but uh, they can call. Yes, uh, they can call. Do you have an online sign up? Or we anything? do have an, well, not necessarily a sign up, but online there's more information about what we offer, upcoming events, as well as any parents or just simply friends of 4-H that would like to volunteer uh, with the kids. So yes, I might could help round some up. Yes, that would be <laughs> awesome. We have camp coming up, so we love when our volunteers love to help out with camp. Mm -hmm. um, and during the camp season, we tend to go to. Where do you camp? We go Clinton to, Farm. <laughs> <laughs> we no. go to we go to Rock Eagle, which is no, in you Eaton's can go Georgia. to Clinton Farm out here. That's where the no, Boy could, Scouts have yeah, their. Yeah, that's right. We could definitely make that happen. We can make that. We happen. got a real perfectly flat hill. I mean, a it is a nice area. There, mm -hmm. Just made mm -hmm. for kids. Awesome. Well, yes. We're gonna have to make that a fall trip. And there, so. there's trails all around in there. Mm -hmm. oh, it's, Oh, it's yes. beautiful. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want to add? Sure. So <laughs> in addition to the uh, after school or specialty clubs, we also do work with the teachers in school. Okay. Um, yes, ma'am. So we offer things like uh, English and language arts uh, support with the teachers. We also provide STEM and engineering method uh, education. Good. Yes, ma'am. So we do a lot in the schools as well. Very good. Yes. Very good. So it would benefit. Uh, the students to yes, yes to be to involved with the 4-H's. Absolutely. I've always wondered what 4-H meant. Now I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, head, health, heart. I thought minutes. it all had something to do with gardens <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot more to it. There's than I a thought. lot. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. And Susan, I saved you for last. Okay. But you're not the least by uh, any means, and you've brought a lot of props. With I you. have. I have. But. Uh, I'm just going to turn it over to you and let you just talk about what all you do and uh, with uh, the, the things that you're involved in, the, the poverty awareness. I'm, I know about that one, mm -hmm. but all the other things too. So just feel free to just say whatever, share whatever you want to okay. share. Well, we are, I think I can speak for all of us in saying we're very proud to work for the University of Georgia here oh, in Douglas go County. Go dogs! <laughs> phenomenal season and we look forward to that but we are faculty members of the University of Georgia mm -hmm. so it's our job to bring the information of the University to the citizens of Douglas County mm -hmm. and we have colleagues in other parts of the state in other counties but it's our job to look at what are the needs in Douglas County and to serve our own citizens. So we're part of the university, but we're part of county government too. Mm -hmm. So that keeps us close to the people and close to other departments that help to work for the citizens. And so our job is never the same two days in a row, which makes it very exciting, sometimes challenging, mm -hmm. but all in all, um, a, great, a great thing to do for a career. Okay, but uh, uh, what are some of the things you focus on as far as nutrition and then health also? Well, both of those kind of go together. Right, don't they, they go together to be <laughs> healthy. <laughs> nutrition is a part of that. And we work with, um, we try to teach young people and adults. Lately, we're focusing on fruits and vegetables and how important those are. And if you're growing peppers or cabbage or tomatoes or kale, just what to do with those after they're grown. We have some recipes, for instance, that we can offer. And when we're, we're working with a group to talk about, well, let's plant these plants and how to grow them. And then we say, well, when you harvest them, these are some ways to store the vegetables these are some ways. Do you ways. teach them how to freeze? We do. Our, our we do. Mm -hmm. And we have some examples here today of uh, just one way to freeze if you're making a prepared food ahead of time or vegetables, how to freeze, how to prepare them, 
how to use food thermometers, and we work with young people, and then we work with other groups in the community mm -hmm. too. We visit with parents that have kids in Head Start, for instance. We do lunch and learns for county government employees and other groups in the community, sometimes businesses, and just talk about healthy eating and fruits and vegetables, and really with today's lifestyles, how to make fast and easy, but yet still nutritious foods for your family. Mm. And, and keep away from the fast foods, and so so much of the fast foods. Right. I don't want to make anybody mad out there. <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. to, we, we need the vegetables, and a lot of kids, I, I had a grandson that would not eat anything but uh, mm -hmm. meat and potatoes. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. I don't think, mm -hmm. and they had to be fried, you know, mm -hmm. fried potatoes. But uh, they just won't, they don't eat the vegetables. But uh, my boys always loved the vegetables. Right. Of course, I cook right. with a pressure cooker, not one this big, but a pressure mm -hmm. cooker. And mm -hmm. uh, you can cook in a fourth of the time. True. Uh, you can cook uh, meat in 15 minutes, mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. like that, uh, like ribs, and they fall off the bone tender. So, right, uh, right. Uh, they always like the vegetables, but this next generation, they just will well, not eat anything. That, but that's one of the food, things we, we hope is if we keep offering and exposing young people, there's, there's some research that says you need 7 to 11 exposures to a particular vegetable. So if you don't like broccoli, if your kids don't like it when you first serve it, don't give up and say they just don't like broccoli. Keep serving it. Next week, mm -hmm. cook it a little differently. Next week, serve it as a snack the next time at dinner. Keep offering it and let, let your child make the decision. But generally, if you keep offering that and other fruits and vegetables, they will catch on with time. Mm -hmm. Uh, cauliflower is one of my favorites, and uh, I have actually cooked cauliflower mashed potatoes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they never knew the difference. Right. Wow. <laughs> right. They never knew mm -hmm. the difference. But I, I told you I would like to know how to make a pizza crust out of cauliflower because mm. I saw that on uh, TV the other mm -hmm. day, and right. I said, "Hey, I would like that." <laughs> That's one of the um, lately a lot of talk about low carb foods, but whether you're eating lower carb or not, we know cauliflower has a lot of health benefits, mm. and it is a vegetable that you can cook in different ways. You can kind of disguise the flavor, add flavorings. You can make it into a crust. You could mash it. You could grind it up. You can serve it as a snack. So again, another good idea. You can fry it. Fry you can it. actually fry cauliflower. True. It's good. It's very good too. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You want to talk about some of the things that you've brought? Yes. We were talking about, you referred to the pressure canner. We get quite a few questions and I teach classes about food preservation. So again, when we're growing tomatoes and peppers, cucumbers, what do you do with all that produce? Corn, beans, and from the University of Georgia, we are known nationwide for our research and information about mm -hmm. food preservation. So if people have questions on how do I can green beans, how long should I blanch peas, or, or corn, corn mm -hmm. how to cook those to preserve them safely, number one, very important, and so that they can last a long time. We have that information, and I do teach classes, and some of that is about using the pressure canner or a water bath canner, and what vegetables or what foods should be processed in each one. Now, I like the easy things. I, I like to freeze, um, uh, like corn, mm -hmm. but I, blend, I cut it off the cob and right. then I freeze, uh, I blanch it and Good. then I freeze it in bags and it keeps all uh, all year so I can eat fresh corn mm -hmm. for us, especially during the holidays and everybody loves uh, the little white corn, you know, so mm. double right. cut off and everything. Mm -hmm. But, um, and green peppers are, uh, I do b banana peppers and mm -hmm. all the, you have to just wash them and put them in a jar, stuff them in a jar mm -hmm. and then put hot vinegar 
pour hot vinegar and they'll seal and they're good. Mm. It's, it's really not that hard to right. uh, put up right. a lot of this food, especially mm -hmm. your favorite. True. Mm -hmm. And the freezing is one of the best ways to go. If you don't have a lot of equipment, don't want to invest a lot, freezing and after that I'd say making jams and jellies or types of vinegars mm -hmm. because you can do that at relatively low cost and as you've done preserve things for a later time mm -hmm. you pick them in season and process them just a little bit sometimes mm -hmm. like with the blanching and then they're available at the holidays it's very enjoyable yes of course mm -hmm. nice to serve with your family and another thing that we see today is that people really want to know what's in their food right and so when you preserve it yourself you know, you know what's what in you, the food yeah what's in there and uh, mm -hmm. so how do we how did somebody get this cookbook these are available online from the University of Georgia I believe they're about twenty dollars maybe less and it has all the recipes and instructions you could ever want but if you don't want to go quite to this investment we have free brochures we have brochures available online and in our office that people can come by or we can mail them out or they can look online to get a lot of this same information about canning, freezing, jams and jellies, drying food, pickling, and other types of preserving. Do you, uh, in here, it's got pears and apples on here. You can preserve fruit like that. Mm -hmm. Do you have to cook it first? Usually you do. Okay. You have to cook it ahead if you're, if you're just canning that or if you're making it into a jam or jelly, but usually we do recommend cooking those. Though there are some ways to freeze pears and apples mm -hmm. too, people really like. And probably dry, mm -hmm. dry some of them mm -hmm. too, bananas, I've seen that mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. um, now I noticed a little uh, brochure, not right. brochure, right here, about how healthy eating to reduce cancer risk. So you tell the people what foods to eat to help prevent cancer? Yes, this is a and program and that other I'm, diseases. I'm mm -hmm. Right, right. Some of those good tips cross over to preventing heart disease and some other diseases. So this is a partnership we have with extension agents in other counties. We have leadership from our food specialist in Athens, registered dietitians. We have support and partnership from the American Cancer Society. So what I've done is offer classes, and I will have more classes coming in the future. This is especially for women, though men can come, but it's for women, uh, middle-aged women. We're really looking for women who don't have health insurance, and we're talking about preventing cancers and then access to some of the testing. We're talking about preventing breast cancer, colon cancer and ovarian cancer mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. So the class is so much fun. We, <laughs> we make some recipes. I make some recipes and we have some samples and those recipes are in this cookbook. They take oh, this cookbook, cookbook okay. home for free <clears throat> and it's in English and Spanish. So they try mm -hmm. some of these recipes and then we talk about some healthy habits, some healthy things to eat physical activity, and then with our partnership with the American Cancer Society, we have a speaker from the Cancer Society and Cobb Douglas Public Health, and they talk about access to the screening services and why it's so important. And what we've learned in Douglas County and statewide is that women do follow up with their screenings and that we are catching some cancers early on and that we're hopefully preventing some cancers by helping women to mm -hmm. get screened. Now all the information about this is on your website? Right. What is your website? Right. Our website, mm -hmm. if you search for UGA Extension mm -hmm. and then look for Douglas, Douglas County, that's the simplest way to find it. All right. Very good. Now, uh, as I mentioned before, I attended a par poverty awareness uh, seminar, mm -hmm. I guess, uh, that you held, and it was very eye-opening uh, where people that have problems, uh, they don't know how to get help uh, 
without going to about five or six different places and they get so frustrated mm -hmm. they throw up their hands and they just give up. So um, you, you want to talk about that please? Yes, the poverty <coughs> simulations and those have been very successful here in Douglas County and I'm invited sometimes into other counties or other organizations. Those are a great awareness for people who work in social services and for people who make decisions to, and also for, um, for volunteers, say from churches, to be acquainted with or reacquainted the with. The resources. Yes, mm -hmm. the resources <laughs> in the community and what it's like to live um, with few resources and some of the hard decisions they may have to make and the stress level also that comes with that. Well, what I, what I didn't understand uh, before I attended that seminar is that you may know to go here to get something, but before you can get that, you got to go over here or somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And and one thing kind of dominoes into the other, and there, uh, you know, you may want food need food stamps, but you've got to go somewhere else first, and it was just right very eye-opening for me and mm -hmm. uh, a great do, do y'all have that also on your website we do have uh, that on our it, website what's the menu what item that what would be under say? family and consumer sciences okay mm -hmm. family and mm -hmm. consumer sciences if uh, someone needs help in mm -hmm. finding out where to go to get right. helped in certain areas. It may be transportation, it may be food, it may be education, it, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. child care, whatever, health care. Um, we're very fortunate here in Douglas County that we have uh, the care place right. for people that don't have uh, insurance. And if you live here, you can uh, have some, find some help there with health issues. And then we have the pantry for food. And then the True. new mountaintop uh, church out in the Winston area. They also have a, a food bank. Or yes. Food, yeah. So we, we've got a lot of resources out here, but mm -hmm. oftentimes one department or one um, organization doesn't know about the other. Mm -hmm. That's true. And that's where we need to bring it all mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. uh, on one page. And I know CORE does a lot That's true. Uh, with that, mm -hmm. too. But that, I hope you have another one of those seminars. It was it was very good. And it helps us to understand where we need to communicate with somebody right. else. We need to, the faith community, we need to communicate with the pantry or the care mm -hmm. place mm -hmm. and, and to other things. Yes, so to that help. we can help direct mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. But uh, I have found that homelessness is begin, beginning to grow. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, here in Douglas County, we're helping with that. With uh, we've got that sanctuary right. village that we're right. uh, creating down there at the old landfill, but that just is just a little piece of the iceberg, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's one uh, one answer to a, maybe a larger problem, uh, but yet a very creative answer there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let's switch uh, directions real quick. This is a radon. I haven't seen the word radon in many, many years. Mm -hmm. And people don't test their houses for radon. They don't have a detector uh, like they should, probably. Uh, does it the radon come out of the rock? Yes. And we've got a lot the shifting of, rock. of the rocks, mm -hmm. and it's odorless, tasteless. Yeah. And we've got a lot and of we, rock in Douglas County. We do. We have we a do. lot of granite outcropping, and of course, we have the various quarries around here harvesting yes. the rock. So we, and then of course, over at Stone, uh, Sweetwater Creek State Park, there's a lot of rock there. So we're I there's a lot of rock in this area. My whole pasture. Was that <laughs> is that is true. If you're a gardener, rock. you'll find out that there's a lot yeah. of rock. But that mm -hmm. shifting of rock causes the uh, that gas. And we do have tests uh, mm -hmm. available for pickup at the uh, extension office. Mm -hmm. And another thing to bring up is the uh, radon gas can come out of the wells. So what they're seeing is well water. It comes up in the well, uh, in the water, and then when it exposes to the air, it makes it available to that environment. So radon gas is a, is a, uh, is a challenge, and uh, we are seeing some of that in Douglas County. Uh, so well, we would recommend testing for not only the 
radon gas in the air, but also in the wells. Yeah, well, I mm -hmm. had something that looked kind of like a fire uh, detector. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know if it works. Oh, <laughs> it's been sitting up there, and we haven't mm -hmm. replaced any batteries in a long oh, time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But at one time, there was a big push to get a radar, bright, mm -hmm. a radon detector mm -hmm. uh, in the homes out, mm -hmm. especially where there were there mm -hmm. is a lot of rock. Mm -hmm. And we we got one, but we haven't tested it in a long time, so I, I wouldn't know if it works or not. <laughs> Just try one of these. Uh, Susan mm -hmm. would probably tell you it's pretty easy to do. For ten dollars, mm -hmm. yeah, you uh, follow the instructions. They're very simple, and you test it on the lowest level of your home for about three days. Then it has a self mailer that you mail this in, and then you get a copy of the results. Our, if you buy this at our office for $10, we get a copy of the results. And if you should need further help, if you have a high reading, we have contacts at the University of Georgia that can help to direct homeowners in what to do. So you don't have to have a detector constantly in your house. You can just test it. That's true. And then you, you'll know at that point yes you know that, that yes you can find the, um get that reading and sometimes you might have to do a second test and then go from there and the we we are still seeing some high readings in douglas county and not just in douglas county it's all across the southeastern u.s where we have all of this rock underneath right. the soil mm -hmm. so we know that radon causes lung cancer it's the second leading cause of lung cancer, and it's and you something you can't smell it. You can't smell it, mm -hmm. see it, you can't it, detect it. And you can't taste it. It, it has to be it's right. Mm -hmm. So we have some ways to test. There are things you can do if your home has a high reading, and we can't really say because your neighbor's reading is high that your reading will be high. Mm -hmm. It varies a lot, but we think it's really wise to test. And so we are we are trying to focus on that. Mm, very good. And radon, mm -hmm. that's a gas, right? Yes. It is. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, mm -hmm. And it's deadly. Yes. It's a silent killer, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It causes the cancer and everything. That's very interesting. Y'all do a lot of things. A lot of different <laughs> things. I don't see how you can come to work mm -hmm. one day and, and mm -hmm. go through all these different uh, phases mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. from, of your job and everything. But it's mm -hmm. been very interesting talking mm -hmm. to y'all. Y'all have got a lot of information available to the public. Mm -hmm. uh, is you. there anything y'all would like to add? Anything at all? I think that uh, mostly you've got some book wraps product. it up. Let's see. Yes, Erica, but, oh. tell us about our Friends right. magazines. So, when I mentioned earlier about the curriculum that we offer, mm -hmm. our Friends magazines provide the youth and their parents uh, just some addif additional information about what we are, what we this do. This is in the almost community. like a comic book. For yes, ma'am. It's right. just for kids. Yeah. Absolutely. So, with this one, it says Farm to Fork. Uh, we're actually piloting a 4 H agriculture club at Mirror Lake Elementary. Um, Very so, it's good. teaching kids basically what Mr. Kevin does in the community. Uh, it's just additional information of what we can buy. It's kid-friendly information for the tell kids. Her, tell her what we did over at Mason Creek uh, yes. Elementary School. <laughs> Yes. That's, your, that's your area, there. isn't it? Yes. Uh, we, it's tomato plants? We, like, yes, I don't know what. Yes. We had, <laughs> what, 60, 70? Se 72, 72 kindergarten children in four classes yes. and about eight uh, teachers and yes. parapros mm -hmm. uh, there. And we um, got to introduce what fall gardening is about. Right. And we brought some plants that were that were given to us, and they installed them in their six uh, raised beds. And the kids were so so much fun, very, very interesting, exciting. very enlightening. Yes. Very exciting. Um, we learned that mm -hmm. anything that looked like uh, looked like a leaf was salad. Was, salad. was yeah. the generic? <laughs> they they well, said I it was have salad. Heard you can eat poke salad. Yeah. Can, yeah. can yeah. you eat poke salad? Yes. If you cook it right. <laughs> if you cook it right, you got to be careful with That's that. Right. Yeah. But we held up, we brought in various vegetable crops yes, and crops. showed them uh, collards, collards and mustards and greens and everything was, Onions. that's salad, you know, yes. romaine, lettuce, and every, so it was fun. Week. But we had a good time, didn't we? Yes, it Great. was awesome. 
Awesome. So we're going to introduce that to other funny. schools. <laughs> when mm -hmm. I go on a vacation and you eat all this rich food, you know, oh, shrimp yeah. mm -hmm. and all this fish and all this mm -hmm. stuff, I get home, the first thing I do is cook pinto beans mm -hmm. <laughs> and some fresh corn. Yes. I, mm -hmm. I cook vegetables because my body gets to craving yes. those vegetables. Mm -hmm. yes. Sure. And, and turnip grains, ugh, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. die for. Mm -hmm. And I can cook them for about five minutes in the mm -hmm. pressure, pressure cooker, cooker. Mm -hmm. and they're very tender. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ready yeah. to go. And it's, it's really exciting. I, I love that extension and what we do, it really overlaps. So if the kids are learning about gardening and at the same time they're learning about how to prepare those fresh fruits and vegetables, it's just a, a family-oriented organization. And just the importance. Yes. The mm -hmm. importance of vegetables and fruit in yes. your diet. Absolutely. You know? mm -hmm. uh, because we grow up on fast food. We, we think that's the norm. Mm -hmm. That's true. So, mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I don't think that that's where the way the Creator made us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, I don't think right. they had McDonald's and so. all these other <laughs> chains back then. Yes. <laughs> so uh, it's been a pleasure to uh, be with y'all this yes. today yeah, and to, to learn here. about all your mm -hmm. your um, activities. Now, Kevin, or maybe uh, uh, maybe you want to address it. I'm sorry, uh, the onions. Yeah, we uh, in the, in the, in okay. the past the 4-H, I'll, I'll, I'll share a little bit, and okay. then pass the bucket to sure, sure. to Erica. Uh, in the past, the uh, Vidalia Onions was a fundraiser that the 4-H used uh, to generate funds to do all the many wonderful things that they do here in the county, and uh, that normally takes place when beginning in January, yes. and they normally the are ready to harvest in May. Now they're and ten pound. Or the, uh, five in five the past, pounds. we've had as as high as fifty pound bags, but I think they move towards a ten pound bag, yes. uh -huh. and uh, it not only supports uh, Georgia grown Vidalia onions. And, and introduces Vidalia onions to the kids and all the uh, public, uh, but it also yes. supports the wonderful things that 4-H does as far as developing yeah. leadership. Well, put and, me on and, the and, list. And, and, and Erica's going to be the point person on that. This yeah, year. I go. always buy your onions because yeah. mm -hmm. I cook with a lot of onions. They've got mm -hmm. to be good for you. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, you could plant onions. You won't have Vidalia oh, onions because Vidalia is specific to that geographical area. But you, mm -hmm. if, you, if you had a little bit of sun or maybe a grow bag, you could put some onion I'm sets try in the grow and bag, try uh, for my yeah. banana pepper because I okay. like the banana pepper. Okay. I don't like the hot pepper. We need to we need to invite you to one of our uh, when we go into the school and do one of our programs yes. there so you can get get to see and 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 walk out of there with a pepper plant. I've got a friend that mm -hmm. plays uh, golf with my husband mm -hmm. and uh, Charlie Lewis, and he always mm -hmm. gives me okra. Oh. And last year he gave me so much okra, I finally had to say. Enough, I've got enough because mm -hmm. I, I froze a lot of it, mm -hmm. I fast froze it, and then I also went, went ahead and cut it up and battered it. Yeah. So when I get mm -hmm. ready for some uh, some uh, fried okra, fried I just okra. bring out the bag and yes, yeah, yeah, I'm awesome. smart. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I've got so much okra, but uh, he gave me a bunch of hot peppers this year. Oh, some okay. hot peppers. Mm -hmm. He even makes his own salsa. Oh, wow. And we took a jar of it to Florida, and we ate the whole jar in one week. And we're talking about a quart jar. Wow. And just me and my husband, mm -hmm. we ate. It, it was delicious. Mm -hmm. He makes his own sauces. Yeah. I wish I had the energy that man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Homemade. Yeah. Nothing yeah. like it. It's but he might could work with y'all to show you Certainly. how to make sauce. That'd be all right with us. Yeah, That'd be fun. <laughs> yeah. Now his has, is a little spicy. Yeah, a little bite to it. Hot. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's great. But anyway, it's been a pleasure to have y'all. I really enjoyed mm -hmm. it. I look forward to uh, working with y'all in, in mm -hmm. other that's projects yes. and everything. Mm -hmm. If I can ever do anything to help y'all or pr Thank you. help you to promote anything, mm -hmm. you let me know. Okay? Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so we appreciate the invite right. and the opportunity. And I, I thank uh, mm -hmm. everyone out there that has had the pleasure of meeting these uh, uh, three very special people. And uh, I thank you for just uh, watching District Dialogue. And with that, I'll say goodbye. Thank you.